So I want to go to Second Kings 23. Second Kings 23. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading and and just studying some of the Old Testament, and I this verse just stood out to me, and I thought I don't ever hear that much about King Josiah, but in verse 25 of Second Kings 23, it says. And it's talking about Josiah, and it says, And like unto him was there no king before him. Now, we're talking about Solomon. We're talking about David. We're talking about all of those kings. Was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him, neither after him, arose there any like unto him. So we've had, I mean, they've had great kings, um, but none of them had the heart that King Josiah had. And I thought, boy, that's powerful. Because mm -hmm. you don't hear that much mm -hmm. about it. But with everything in him, he turned to the Lord. Now, from the time of Solomon to the time of Josiah, there was 39 kings. And out of those 39 kings, only eight of them were good. Wow. So all of the history right. that has come down through Israel and through Judah, uh, out of all of those kings, 520 years, yeah. give or take, 520 years of history, 39 different kings, and only eight good ones. Boy, that lets you know how evil filters in and, and gets mm -hmm. into the places where it, it doesn't need to be. But I want us to go back. We're going to read in Second Kings, but I want us to go back to First Kings real quick, 13. And we're going to read... Uh, 1 through 10. And the reason I'm reading this is because this is 300 years before King Josiah was even born. But there was a prophetic word given about this king 300 years before his birth, even calling out his name, who he was going to be. And so I want us to look at this um, in First Kings 13, verse 1 says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Jeroboam, the uh, son of, of uh, Solomon, evil, mm -hmm. did wrong, leading Israel into sin. And so a prophet, an unnamed prophet, has come to him out of um, Judah. And he cried against the altar, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that uh, burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Jeroboam was an evil king, leading them into idolatry. This is 300 years before Josiah, but the unknown prophet comes and lets them know there's going to come a prophet, and his name is going to be Josiah. Now, that's a long time to wait. That's a long time to wait. For that. Now, 300, years. 300 years before he came. Yeah. Verse 4, And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. He was going to attack him. He was going to try to prevent this. But, and his hand, which he put forth from him, dried up so that he could not pull it uh, to him again. Wow. The altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored uh, him again, and became as it was before. That's a very gracious man of God. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that your king is going to attack you, and then he backs off because he sees the power and the anointing of God, mm -hmm. and then says, okay, well, pray my hand gets well again. <laughs> Probably could have just walked off and said, forget it, Jack. <laughs> You're, yeah. Yeah. You're going to take what consequences you get. But he didn't do that. Okay. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thy house, I will not go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. 
For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now the end of this story, and most of you have read it, if you get through with that, he went another way, mm -hmm. and was in obedience to what God had said for him to do. Right. However, there was an old prophet in, uh, in Bethel, and his son saw what had happened to Jeroboam, so they came and they, they talked to the old prophet and said, there was a man of God, and he came and he, you know, he, he put a curse on the altar, the altar split, the hand of Jeroboam was withered up, and then it got restored, and was telling this old prophet all of this, and then the old prophet said, well, uh, which way did he go, which way did he go? So the old prophet went to this man of God, um, just so we don't have to read all this, I'm telling you this because you'll see it where we're going. Went to the man of God and said, uh, come back and eat and drink with me and, and rest at my house. And, he, and the man of God said, no, I can't do that. i got to go another way. I can't eat or drink. can't do anything. He said, that's the word the Lord gave me. And then the old prophet lied. He said, yeah, but the Lord spoke to me and said for you to come to my house and eat and drink and all the da. So the man of God instead of standing strong with what the word of God spoke to him, yielded to the old prophet. And I thought, what a lion devil he was, an old prophet. And he led this, this man of God back to the house. And then he started feeling conviction. So the old prophet spoke to the man and said, I lied, God didn't say that, and you're gonna die today. You won't be, you're, you won't be going home. You're going to die. Because he was being disobedient. Because he was being disobedient. And I thought, well, what'd you do to the old prophet? God, he died. He lied. He <laughs> been... He's not really on. Well, he's on his way to hell anyway. Well, he should have been smitten to the ground. Yeah. So anyway, the man of God left, got mm -hmm. going down the road, and got attacked by a lion, and, and he was slain by the lion. The lion didn't eat the man of God, he didn't eat the donkey, he, the lion and the donkey stood by the body of the man of God in the road dead. And that's totally out of character for the totally lion. Totally out of character for the lion. Yeah. That's when they knew it was the judgment of God. Yeah. That God sent the lion to kill the, the man of God. Yeah. So the people passing by uh, saw it and they took you know, told the old prophet about it. So the old prophet took the man of God put his body in his tomb and told his sons, he said, when I die, place my body beside him in this tomb. The reason I'm telling you all this is because we're going to read it over here where we're going. So, so here we have the man of God and the old prophet that, prof, that convinced the man of God to do wrong. They both are in the same grave. And that man of God is the one that prophesied 300 years before that Josiah was going to come. Okay, yeah. got that? All right, yeah. now, that's the background, the history of that. So go with me to 2 Kings 22, and we're going to do a lot of reading, but I just want us to get the history of this because we think about eight good kings in all these 500 years of history. Now, Josiah, his daddy was Ammon, and he was evil. Amos' dad was Manessa, uh, Manessa, <coughs> Manessa, excuse me. Manessa was one of the most evil kings in the whole history of <coughs> Israel. Oh, wow. He had blood running in the streets from the people that he killed. Totally yeah. evil, absolutely, and everything. Manessa, his daddy, was Hezekiah. Hezekiah was one of the most <coughs> godly kings in all of Israel. So you have... Hezekiah's rule and reign, he appoints Manasseh as his, his heir. Manasseh, even though seeing the blessing of God on Hezekiah and all that he did for the kingdom of Judah and Israel, Manasseh went the way of evil right. and, and followed in the way of Baal and all of that. Then when he died, his son Ammon was uh, put as the king. He only reigned two years. He was 20 when he began Break two years, his servants killed him. He was evil. He wasn't any good either. Mm -hmm. He was evil. 
So now we're coming down where we have Josiah. So Josiah's daddy was evil. His granddaddy was evil. His great-granddaddy Hezekiah was a godly man. Right. And you say, how do we skip all the, all these generations and the good and the evil and the evil and the good and all this intermix? But there's a seed, and I, I will get it when we go through here, that, you know, when we profess Christ, right. a lot of people have a lot of generational things that they're dealing with from generation to generation. And they don't realize that a lot of times that's those seed, that generational curse that has never been plucked up and, and pulled out of that, uh, wow. that generation. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, well, and there's a lot of that. Okay, so in 22 now, here we go. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And I want us to look at this as his history, his story, in the light of how young this man was, this young boy that began to rule and reign. And the only, uh, the only real um, examples he had of kingship or rulership were evil that were set before him. That's all he knew. Okay. He began to reign. He reigned 30 and 1 years in Jerusalem. So he was approximately 39 years old when he died. He what? About 39 years old when he died. Yeah. So he was very young. It says, and his mother's name was Jediah, the daughter of Adiah of Basra. Now, the mother's name means um, beloved. Okay? And the daddy's name, Adiah, means Jehovah has adorned himself. So I believe that the good seed that, that Josiah picked up on came from the mother's lineage, not from the daddy's lineage, but from the mother's lineage. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah, so he's 26 years old now when he begins to really start revitalizing the kingdom, that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hil Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Go add up all the money that's come in, is what he's saying. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work, and have the oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house unto the carpenters, the builders, the masons, and to buy timber and new stone, new stone to repair the house. Howbeit, there was no reckoning made with them of the money which was delivered into their hands because they dealt faithfully. So they didn't bother to add it all up and see how much they had because they trusted everybody to deal and to do, and evidently they did. They were faithful in the work God called them to. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord, and Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Now this book of the Lord had probably been hidden for over, uh, Manasseh reigned 55 years, and Ammon reigned two years, so the book of the Lord had probably been hidden a, almost 60 years, probably 58, 59 years, in the house of the Lord, and had not been brought out, had not been read, had not been... Nobody had it. Nobody had it, and nobody read it to uh, Josiah. Wow. until they found it hidden in the house of the Lord. That's how long the word of God had been hidden from the people of Israel. Hallelujah. Okay. And Shaphan, the scribe, came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that did the work. They have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan, the scribe, showed the king, saying, Hil Hilkiah, the priest, has delivered me a book and Shaphan read it before the king. Now, he's 26. This is when he's starting to, to really um, be anointed of God. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahiakim and the son of Shaphan and Achor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Isaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go you and inquire of the Lord for me for, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. 
So Hilkiah the priest, and Ahiakim, and Achor, and Shaphan, and Isaiah went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. Isn't it amazing when you see that the leadership of a country does not follow the things of God? They cause the people to sin. They do what? They cause the people to sin because they don't set up a standard. They don't set up yeah. uh, a, 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 an example of what's right, what's wrong, what's holy. And because the leaders are evil, then all the people, all of the citizens of that country come in under that evil mm -hmm. and are taken away by it. Actually, see that's what that, that <clears throat> excuse me that's what happened has happened to America. That's it's, it's why I'm bringing this because you see so much in this. Mm -hmm. I, I could see uh, Trump as yeah. Josiah. Yeah. Uh, Amen. You know, as someone that has come to uh, show the way that God wants this nation to go. Right. Okay. All right. Verse 15. It says, and she said unto them, "This is hold of the prophetess." She said. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, to the, tell the man that sent you to me. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even the words of the book which the king of Judah has read. Because they have all forsaken me, and have, turned, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, Because your heart was tender, and you have humbled yourself before the Lord, when you hear what I speak in this place, against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent your clothes, and wept before me, I have also heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again, sparing him. I, and as I was reading, reading this, and I thought, I'm wondering if uh, God will spare America for a time and <clears throat> a season that President Trump will bring this nation back again to the things of God. I think, I know this is going to sound crazy, and people think I'm crazy. In 1 Corinthians, it said that the last Trump, the day when Christ shall rise first, uh -huh. I think Trump's going to get elected, and I think that uh, uh, there's going to be a great revival in America. A lot of people's going to come to America and then I think that uh, we'll fix them and get raptured out of here. You know what, I... I At the end of that, uh, towards the end of that. That would not surprise me. I'm telling because you. Because for some reason, and I thought, I've never brought a history lesson like this before we just read, 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 but it seems like there's something in this passage with this one king, uh, you know, because you, you don't hear that much about him, but the fact that he says he's better than any king before him or after him. Well, there's right. some good kings before him. I mean, King David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. Right. You know, but this young man at eight years old, uh, growing up with nothing but evil all around him and, and witchcraft and child sacrifice and all that he saw right. as being a, a king's kid, uh, to see how God intervened in his life and changed the direction of this, the, the, this nation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. anyway, yeah, it's good. Uh, chapter 23. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. What chapter? 23. I'm Next sorry. chapter, yeah. yeah. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him. And the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great, and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant. 
And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring out to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kedron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had or deigned to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the planets, for all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord, Lord, which Jerusalem, without Jerusalem, unto the brook Kidron, and burned it all at the brook Kidron, and stamped it small to powder, and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people, bringing that curse upon the people that had served Baal and had died. And I looked at the, the grove. I thought, how are you growing trees in the house of the Lord, in the place of, of God? And it stated that the groves were probably tree stubs that had been carved into sexual images. Right. And those sexual wow. images were all throughout and placed throughout all of the and homosexual stuff. Yeah. All throughout the house of God. And so when, when uh, Josiah did a purging, he purged everything that was wicked, everything that was evil, out of God's house and did not tolerate for any of it to be left. That's that's why he had a whole heart to serve the Lord. That's what's going to have to happen to this nation. Yep. Well, I, I think well, I think we're headed there. Well, I do too. I think we're headed there, and I think it's going to have to be a total uh, give over, and it's going to have to come from the head, from the government. It's going to yeah. have to come. Yeah. Well, I think... I think just pray the Trump gets elected. Well, honey, I am praying. I'm praying. Yeah. It says, And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove. So sodomy was one of the main issues. And look at our nation today. Yeah. I'm telling you. What was it? Sodomy. sodomy. And uh, uh, he broke down the houses of the Sodomites. So, you know, they were attacking that spirit even back then. Yeah. To just you know destroy it from the lands because it destroys everything that comes yeah. around it. Comes around. Yeah. yeah. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense, from Geba to Beersheba, and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering <coughs> of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among the brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Moloch. So even child sacrifice was rampant back then as it is today. With That's abortion. abortion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So all of these things, I mean, the things we see, the abortion issue, the... Uh, homosexual issue, the pedophile issue, the you all know, of it, yeah. all of it is here. Mm -hmm. And he took away the horses that the king of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan, Melech the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the son with fire. And the altars that were on top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, here's the root, this is what I want us to see, which the root which Solomon, the king of Israel, had builded for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and fill their places with the bones of men. All of these gods, these false gods, were brought in by Solomon. Right. And they were never purged. Right. And all of the 500 and something years, now, probably Hezekiah perched the high places and the groves and some of that. But these altars that Josiah are, is tearing down right now were altars that were left there that were never removed from all of those 520 years of different kings, even the eight good ones that have come up so far. Go ahead. Uh, they left 
these these uh, altars to these gods. And that root was still there to call back all of that darkness. And I, as I've been praying over this, I thought, God, what is the root that has been left in America somewhere yeah. that has allowed all of this darkness to keep coming manifest? Well, that also applies to the church. Yeah. Be because yeah. Uh, a lot of people come to Christ and they surrender their life to Christ, but then in their process of their walk, they fall back, and then they have these hidden groves, these yeah. hidden altars in their life. Yeah. And, and what God is saying there, we gotta, we need to get rid of all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's powerful. Well, it's, it's sure, let's see history repeated over and over and over and over and over again, yeah. over yeah. hundreds of years. Okay, verse 15, moreover the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made the Israel to sin, had made both that altar and the high place, he broke down and burned the high place and stamped it small to powder and burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers. Now this is why I gave you the beginning of this. As Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. That was 300 years before this. Then he said, what, uh, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, let him alone, let no man move his bones. So they let the bones alone, and the bones with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. So that's uh, that sepulcher was still there 300 years later, and the fulfillment of it, Josiah got to see the fulfillment of that prophecy. Wow. Wow. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the chief city, uh, were there in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away and di uh, did to them according to all the acts that he had done at Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people saying, keep the Passover unto the Lord your God as it is written in the book of this covenant. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel nor in the kings of Judah, but in the 18th year of Josiah's reign, he's 26, wherein the Passover was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him, there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all of his heart and with all of his soul and with all of his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. Now, that was the end of his reign. But I want us to go to, um, we're going to close to Second Chronicles chapter 35. Second Chronicles? Second Chronicles chapter 35. This gives us a better picture of the uh, sac the uh, end of what Josiah did with calling the children of Israel back to the Sabbath day and the celebrations of God. Oh, second Chronicles what? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. This is. Uh, more, moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. And he set the priests in their charges and encouraged them to serve into the service of the house of the Lord. And said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, uh, which were holy unto the Lord, put the holy ark, and this is another act that he did, put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God and his people Israel. They've never found the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. 
Now they think they have. Right. Uh, stowed away under a hill. I read, I saw a thing on, on one of the history channels where they think they found the Ark of the Covenant under the, under Calvary actually, where the blood of Jesus would drip down from the cross mm -hmm. through the dirt onto the mercy seat of wow. the Ark. Wow. Oh, wow. So, uh, and they've tested that blood. They sent it off and tested it, and they found out that the blood is was living blood. Was what? Living. That blood was living blood. Wow. And so, he's the one that that stowed all of that and protected it from all of the sieges because the temple of God was ransacked when Nebuchadnezzar came through, right. and all of the the hordes that attacked Israel over the years. They took all of the gold, the silver, everything in the temple of God was removed. Right. But because Josiah took the Ark of the Covenant and stashed it in a place where no one could find it, that was spared. You know who Nebuchadnezzar was? The king of Babylon. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. so the acts that he did, and that's, it's just amazing how, and the first celebration of the Passover that they had had in probably 50, 60 years, and Josiah, I'm, I'm skipping down here to verse 7. And Josiah gave to the people of the flocks, lambs, and kids all the Passover offerings for all that were present to the number of 30,000 and 3,000 bullocks. These were of the king's substance. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests and to the Levites, Hephaiah, Zechariah, Jethiel, and the rulers of the house of God gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings. 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen. Okay, we're going to go on over here. I'm not going to read all that because it tells what he, all he did. Okay, go down to verse 18. Verse 17? 18. 18. Uh -huh. It says, And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Now think about this. No Passover like to that in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem in the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. 26 years old, such a young man with such wisdom, to come to serve the Lord with all of his heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We'll read the rest of this because this is how he died. The end of it, Jeremiah was a prophet in his his time frame. Zephaniah was a prophet in his time frame. And then, of course, all of the prophetess. Jeremiah was very close to Josiah. And a uh, commentary that I read, Jeremiah counsel, counseled, counseled him against going to war with this... this um, Egyptian king, but he didn't listen. Josiah didn't listen. Okay, the rest of it, how he dies, it says, so after all this, what, what, what verse? verse 20, Okay. so after all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, what have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house where with I have war. For God commanded me to make haste, forbear thee from uh, meddling with God. Who is with me that he uh, destroy you not? So this was the thing that, that Josiah did that really screwed him up, caused him to have an early death. He did not listen to God, but when, I don't know why he would even do that, but he didn't listen to God. Never, <clears throat> nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him. He hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of the chariot, put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers, and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah in their, lament, in their lamentations unto this day. That's how the book of Lamentations opens up with this death of Josiah. 
and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are all written in the Lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to all that which was written in the law of the Lord, and his deeds first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. So his rule and his reign came 39 years. Is, is he, he ruled for 31 years. He was eight when he started ruling and reigning. So in all, 39 years, he was there and did such a miraculous work in the 39 years that God gave him of life on this earth to follow everything of the Father with everything in him, his heart, his soul, and his strength. And so, you know, I'm thinking and praying that as the scriptures are repeated and, and done, that God's going to give America some some grace and space. I, believe so. I don't know how long, but uh, we are seeing a great revival come. We're seeing, uh, you know, uh, just people come to the Lord by the droves, and so thank right. God for that. You know, right, Amen. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Good preaching. Well, I don't know about good preaching, but that was a really interesting story. That was good. You know? it was real good. Especially yeah. since you don't hear so much about it. Yeah. To have been better than any king before and after, so. Yeah. But he was young, but he was wise for his age. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Just yeah. goes to show you when God calls you, you know, regardless of coming out of all of that evil and all of that lifestyle, uh, God can anoint you to be the best that he wants you to be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think about Trump a lot of that because coming out of the world and there's so, you know, 